Good evening, and thanks for joining TEDx Spokane uh, this evening. Uh, with me, I've got Robert Thompson. Robert spoke with TEDx in 2019. Um, this is an event where we try to revisit alumni, uh, we being the TEDx community, TEDx Spokane community. Um, we have an event coming up October 9th, 2021 here, uh, just about seven, seven and a half weeks away. So we're really excited about that. But the TEDx Salon series, this live conversation with our alumni helps to reunite uh, our community of viewers like you with our past speakers and try to bring them back to have a conversation with us about their, their performance, but also about the community that they've built and continue to build the work they continue to do. We're grateful for that. Uh, we're grateful for Northwest X Talks, the nonprofit that brings TEDx to Spokane every year and all of our sponsors that, that make that happen. Uh, if you still want to be a part of our volunteer crew, we, we're always looking for support um, for the main event and then all through the year. We, we do a spirit series of, of these salon events, but we also do some auditions, um, and, it, and it takes a lot of people to put that together. So without further ado, I'd like to reintroduce Robert. Robert, thanks for joining me tonight. Thanks for joining, letting me come to your home. Yeah. We are on Bag End, I believe. Um, uh, but uh, get to witness and experience um, a part of, I think, what's become a part of your identity. But let's uh, maybe back up to 2019 and, and your talk about identity. And I guess finding your identity, creating your identity, and um, rewind. Maybe give us an update. Well, back us up. Tell us a little bit about that talk. What did you tell us and how did you, did you help inform identity uh, a couple years ago? Yeah, so um, I'll kind of uh, pick at a piece of that question, which was this uh, idea of finding your identity and creating your identity. And I think that those are um, two halves of the same whole. And kind of the, the part of the question that I wanted to, uh, to address when it came to that talk was, you know, this world that we're in that has, you know, we introduce ourselves by the way that we work, the work that we do, uh, the type of family structure we have, uh, our religion, our race, our uh, uh, economic status, all of that feeds into who we are. And we tend to think of a lot of these things as being somewhat static or they change and they change in big dramatic ways. Um, but really taking ownership of that and ownership of uh, not only who you think you are and questioning that, but who, uh, who you can be when you blow open the door, when you start to play with these different aspects of who you are. Interesting. You carry that, and you carry a bias, and you may even um, uh, it may even set some limitations on what you think you can do, huh? Absolutely, and um, I think kind of playing with that is a great way of addressing bias. Is a great way of addressing um, who you are. I think sometimes we have a disconnect between who we think we can be and who we think we are, who we think people expect us to be, and so taking that, really reflecting on it, trying to figure out where all those pieces come from, and uh, playing with other pieces to an extreme level sometimes um, can be really freeing and a lot of fun. You know, I think kids do this a lot. You know, uh, kids who put on fairy wings or they love Halloween, it's my favorite holiday. Um, and so this idea of, you know, dressing up as, as a princess or a knight or a captain and kind of playing with these things that, you know, maybe you don't feel brave, but when you pick up a sword, it, it instills something in you. That sense of uh, play is something we lose when we start to get into this um, social norm or social contract piece where we're expected to act and behave a certain way. And I think busting open the doors to that is wonderful and playful and so fun and such a great way to connect with not only parts of yourself that uh, you maybe aren't allowing to shine through, but uh, with other people who are maybe different, and you're like, I have no idea how they do that. <laughs> so that's that's what's fun about about it for me, and that's really the point um, of of having that conversation. Is it's this big, messy, complicated thing. When you strip it back and you start to think, well, who am I? You can be anyone you want, <laughs> and you know, re regardless of of everything else that's going on. Um, and so it's it's really I think something that people forget that they get to control and they get to play with. I love that in your in your talk, um, you described a couple of moments that helped I, I think shape, and it was um, getting caught kissing 
uh, was one of those moments. And then there was a, a conversation about your name mm -hmm. and, and the, the name and how the name carried, um, sp within the community, carried uh, expectations. And, and somebody called you out and said, well, you're Mexican, right? And you said, no, I'm Costa Rican. Uh, Puerto, Puerto Rican. Rican. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. But that it was like it was awesome that it's like no wait a minute and it's completely no it's 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 not what you assumed or it's not um, and, and there's there are connotations and assumptions that we all make um, that aren't necessarily accurate. Yeah, yeah, and I think you know it's it's very uh, normal human behavior to when you see something to to draw relationship to that and. I, I don't necessarily see anything wrong with that and um, with, you know, because it's, it's the way that we navigate the world, it's the way that, you know, we've uh, evolved socially, but I do think that it's a very exciting idea about what happens if and when we can get beyond that, if and when we can really get to a point where we're not making quick judgments, where we're not making judgments about ourselves and about others based on any number of things. And for me, when it came to this talk, it was really about uh, distilling it down into my own life. When have uh, conversations happened about me or with me about who I am? And when have I felt a little bit of dissonance about that? Um, when have I felt uncomfortable about that and why? And um, is that something that I can affect or that I can change or that I should change? Um, and that's a conversation that I think all of us you know, get to have with ourselves um, in, in some way or another at some point in our lives when our identities change or when somebody makes an assumption about us. And so really sitting in that uncomfortable moment and thinking about, well, who am I, what am I, what does all of this mean, um, is a wonderful place to start. Um, and then not just that sense of, you know, getting homework, but the sense of joy that can come with playing with those pieces. Maybe relaxing or even coming to coming to agree with or disagree with some of those aspects. Yeah. You're, I, I was looking online and your talk has been viewed over 2,100 times now, which I think is an awesome feat. Um, do you feel, have you gotten some feedback um, maybe from that viewership that um, has helped you continue to improve that identity? Yeah, um, I've definitely had some, uh, some conversations with folks uh, about um, really whether or not, uh, this continuing conversation of whether or not the, the premise holds up. Um, what are my blind spots? What am I missing? Um, I think that for the most part it's been really very positive. And I'll be honest with you, I don't, uh, I don't read comments. So <laughs> I do make a point there. But people who come to me and they want to have a conversation, I'm absolutely and always open. Um, because it does make me better. It does make me think about, well, what are the overlaps? Where does this fall short? And uh, so far, it's been um, overwhelmingly positive. So, right on. Yeah. Right on. Well, let's talk a little bit about your experience with TEDx Spokane uh, a couple years ago. But um, how was the journey? I mean, were you prepared to give that talk? Yeah. Um, yes and, and no. I, uh, it was something that I feel and is something that I feel uh, very strongly about because I think that it's a really important uh, cultural conversation um, in a number of ways uh, today. Um, but when it came to actually doing the talk, I was terrified. <laughs> I really was. Because when you have kind of a, a big idea, um, it's really easy to start to wonder um, how other people are going to respond to, yeah. to it and to uh, start to question yourself. It, does this make sense? Is it, uh, is it valid? Um, one thing that I like to tell myself is, you know, there's going to be any number of people out there who are going to invalidate you. You don't need to do it to yourself. And so taking that thought um, and really just saying no and having wonderful, wonderful support, um, both from my mentor and from my husband, Ryan, um, just saying, no, this is um, this is important. This is a, a conversation that, that needs to be had. Um, it was incredibly, incredibly helpful to me. Um, and I do think that it was a, uh, a great talk. I mean, it was something taking this big, messy idea of identity and distilling it through um, really kind of two lenses, the lens of drag and the lens of my own personal 
uh, identity and growth and kind of how all that feeds in together, um, I think was a, a really great way to, to start that conversation. The, I think the mission in general is to, to promote these ideas we're sharing and to give a, a stage um, to many the, the many ideas within our community that may not have that platform. I mean, that's the goal. And to, to um, one, uh, pull out ideas that may make some people uncomfortable, but to allow them a safe place to explore them and to promote that, um, the sharing of these ideas that then other people feel compelled to be able to share those new ideas or, or share their own idea, right? To, to get them um, to act and to, to create change or be a change agent, which is, which is really awesome. And I guess I, I would thank you again for your vulnerability and uh, putting, putting all of that effort into uh, one, your talk, but putting yourself out there and presenting an idea that, um, that you, you had to take with confidence that other people would, again, not, not approve or not agree with, but at the same time is part of you and your identity. But at the same time, it's, um, uh, that's the minority and, and you shouldn't worry about um, people complaining or, or not agreeing with you so much. Um, no, that's awesome, that's awesome. Um, along the journey, I guess, uh, what do you, if you're talking a little bit to people preparing for a, a, whether it's a TEDx Spokane or other TED or complicated conversation, um, you know, what, what may have helped you build the confidence or, or prepare to give this talk um, through that journey? Because you had probably at least three or four months to, to kind of refine and uh, improve, but to, to write and, and present, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I think that um, anybody who has a big idea or has an idea that just it seems like nobody's talking about um, to recognize that there's always going to be other people who feel the same way and uh, maybe they don't know how to word it maybe they don't know how to uh, how to bring it up so if you think that you have a great idea or if you even if you think that there's a conversation that's a little bit missing um, to definitely look at the audition dates and go in and sit down with yourself first and think about how um, how this might help uh, other people who feel the same way as you and be willing to be vulnerable be willing to take uh, that bit of courage and set foot on the stage I mean I was shaking when I first went up there but um, it's important I mean all of Again, there's going to be any number of people who are uh, going to try to invalidate you and when you have something that you feel strongly about or a conversation that you feel like you want to have, um, it's important to let that out. Um, not only because it can help other people, but also because it can be um, incredibly, incredibly cathartic for you as well. Um, on the actual uh, TEDx journey itself, I mean, trust other people, keep that vulnerability, keep that courage. Um, it's um, it's, I think, rare that people feel sure of themselves all the time. <laughs> um, and so be willing to feel unsure of yourself. Be willing to reach out. You guys provide uh, fantastic mentors, which is a, uh, a wonderful resource. Uh, people to consistently kind of check over what you're doing, to ask questions, uh, and to provide feedback. And that is a wonderful uh, resource during the process. I, uh, I did have a a great experience and I, I greatly appreciate it. Oh, right on, right on. Well, I, I think it's just continuing to try to reform and improve your talk and, and I think, or your message, and I think that's our goal would be to, to refine and, and hone in on the true message. So I think that's where you see coaching and mentors come in and they, mm -hmm. they try to help maybe use tools, whether it's multimedia, but otherwise even dress or um, uh, the stage itself to try to Try to share and, and um, um, give access to the audience to what you're trying to communicate, which is pretty cool. Um, has your identity, so, so over the past couple of years, has the identity changed or has this talk, are you giving this talk conti continuously and have you improved or changed the way you tell the talk or, or go through the story? Yeah, you know, I think with people that, I, um, that I've had this conversation with, um, it's really been uh, a great, you know, it's really meant to be a starting off point into this larger um, conversation about uh, social norms and, and who we are as people and what all of that means. 
Um, and there are no quick answers because it's, again, it's very messy and it's very complicated. But every time I have these conversations, I, I come away with a few extra pieces, you know, a few extra things that I'm like, oh, this is, this is uh, really great. This is how it's affected my identity, my race, my gender has affected me and how it's affected other people is different. And that's important to keep, uh, to keep tabs on. Um, as far as, you know, my own, I think everybody in 2020 experienced some sort of blow or change to their identity, whether that's having children, whether that's uh, leaving a job, uh, whether you're now a master bread maker. I wouldn't say I'm a master, but I'm getting there. <laughs> so there's a number, a number of things that we all kind of took on this last year when we had uh, some of our identity stripped away from us. And you know, searching for for new pieces, um, and that's been uh, incredibly exciting to see for a lot of people. Um, and it's, uh, I think, a great opportunity and exercise to uh, to play with new things and um, to really get a better sense of, of what they bring to you, what they bring to your community. Um, it's been a very interesting year uh, for all of that. For Myself, I you know it's always changing. Um, it's always you know playing with the edges of what um, what I think I am mm -hmm. and what I think my limitations are. Um, whether that's changing roles when it comes to uh, a job, whether that's uh, trying to figure out uh, if I'm going to wear nail polish to the store if that makes you way too uncomfortable. You know all of these little pieces that kind of feed in and build. I think a lot of courage. Um, for myself and there's also a lot of people in my life um, that have come and had conversations with me about how it's affected the way that they see their selves so I was wondering about that and, and have you been invited to conversations and or uh, I guess seen as a thought leader on that and are people seeking your counsel on um, identity or uh, finding themselves or um, I, yeah have you, have, we find that uh, the audience receives most talks very well, and it's really awesome to see that that alumni network actually engage even more in our community to help be a thought leader within uh, the, the conversation that they've already started. Have you seen some people come out and ask you to come talk to them about your work within their environments? Yeah, so um, not necessarily, again, with 2020, it's been kind of a whirlwind, and I think that um, any uh, setups for that have been kind of you know difficult. Um, we I have been uh, invited uh, by some folks to uh, to have conversations, but that kind of fell through with uh, 2020. But a lot of the really rewarding ones have been um, kind of one on ones where people are just kind of asking questions. And what's so exciting is they're not necessarily asking questions of me; they're asking questions of themselves with me. And it's exciting to go on that uh, journey with people and kind of see how, um, you know, I can think of one uh, whose gender identity right now is shifting. And um, there we're having conversations about, you know, the presentation of gender, what gender means for you versus what it means when you go to the gas station. And really remembering, you know, keeping track of what things are for you, what makes you feel good, what makes you happy inside and uh, what's for everybody else. And finding that balance of you know feeling safe, feeling seen, feeling heard. Um, and it's not necessarily a conversation of you know what do you think I should do or what do you think this is, but it's really a, hey, I, I feel this way or I'm having this particular dilemma. Um, what are your thoughts? And uh, really going on that journey with them, not for them, and um, helping them kind of uh, answer questions that maybe they didn't think that they were even asking. Um, so it's been incredibly exciting to see those moments. Right on. Right on. Well, yeah. should we open this up to our audience if we have anybody that wants to ask a question of Robert? I do. Have some. Okay, ready? What current topic is the hardest to discuss with others due to backlash or others feeling uncomfortable? Oh. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's a pretty easy answer. I do, you know, race is a very difficult topic, um, especially this uh, this last year has been really highlighted a lot of things. I, um, 
I myself kind of thought that we were a lot further along uh, in, in a lot of conversations there than, than it seems we are. And so having that highlighted um, really kind of drove home, again, you know, some of my own inconsistencies of thought where I thought that we were in a place that we're not. And so it's a very difficult conversation to have. I think it's a very important conversation to have. Um, and it's one that um, we shouldn't necessarily shy away from. One more. Um, if you were to give another TED Talk uh, in the future, what would your topic be? Ooh, uh, what would my topic be? Oh, gosh, I don't even know. <laughs> um, I think it would be uh, probably in in the realm of vulnerability and courage. I think that uh, you know all of these things feed back together, uh, handling um, the big feelings that we have inside. I, I like to tell people you're just as big inside as the universe is outside, um, and really taking time to recognize that. A lot of you know drag is very face value. Um, uh, well, I don't want to say that. It's it's a lot of internal stuff as well, but I think people forget that. Um, and so really uh, a conversation about all of the big internal feelings that we have every day and how to kind of sit with them would be a, a great conversation to continue to have. One more. Could you uh, tell for, for the screen this, about the space you're in? Because uh, it's pretty unique and I don't really know much about it. Yeah, so uh, my husband, Ryan Ulrich, uh, who has done two TED Talks now, or TEDx Talks now, uh, built this lovely Hobbit house. So you've got our red round door behind us. Um, so he built it, uh, must have been 2017, and uh, has had a wonderful time uh, with it, inviting the community to come and enjoy it, uh, to come and, and share this space. It's been so fun in 2020, uh, giving people a good excuse to get out, uh, we've got some lovely trails here that go back to a waterfall about a mile and a half uh, behind the house. And um, it's been a, a great community engagement tool. It's been so fun for us, especially this last year, just to see the types of people who come uh, bring ornaments without uh, any, any prompting uh, during the holiday season. We've got some painted rocks that people have started to bring. It's been a fun community builder. Ryan wants to know, who is your favorite drag queen right now? Who is my favorite drag queen right now? Well, darn, I was going to bring in a wig and put Charlie in it and see it, how, how he did, but uh, I think we can save that for another time. <laughs> um, my favorite drag queen right now. Uh, oh, gosh. I would say... I do love art out of Australia. Um, she's fun. She's had a great uh, a great career over uh, the past many years, and has finally had some um, highlighted success in uh, in reality TV. So that's a fun one to watch. Art, art out of Australia. Very beautiful looks. Awesome. Well, I'll say one more time. Thank you for hosting us, having us in your home, uh, as well as helping to recap, I guess, where you've been over the past couple of years and maybe how your talk has continued to, to be spread, uh, maybe how you've grown too. So thank you very much for that. Uh, I'll remind our audience our event is coming up just about seven, seven and a half weeks away, October 9th, 2021 at the Bing Theater, downtown Spokane. Uh, tickets are available. Um, opportunities to volunteer are still available. And we hope you'll, you'll join us, um, Robert and, and the rest of our alumni. We, we always invite them back, so you're, you're welcome to come and seek out our alumni at our, our TEDx Spokane events um, and continue the conversations with them um, there if you're, if you're around. So thank you again. Thank you. Appreciate I appreciate the opportunity. I'll see you uh, in October. Yeah. That'd be fun.